I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Okay, let's give you another update. I think I just talked about this last week, didn't I? Didn't I just, let me tell you something again about Fulton County, Atlanta jail. Didn't I say this you need to be shut down again? This is a new story. This ain't the same story I told y'all last week. This story ref referenced the story that I referenced about the bugs. Because the other story didn't reference the bugs last week. It referenced a young lady who died. Now, this is someone else who died in Fulton County Jail. What is going on in Fulton County Jail and why haven't it been shut down? That's the next place that needs to be shut down. Let's go. Inmate dies in Fulton County Jail Friday, six to die within eight months, official says. This was 19 hours ago. An inmate dies at Fulton County Jails this week, according to the Fulton County Sheriff. Now, this is new because this is a different scenario, guys. The statement released Saturday stated that detention officer found Christopher Smith, 34, unresponsive in the medical unit. Now, this time he was in the medical unit. And I watch as I read this article, they're going to start talking about his charges and all this stuff. We ain't talking about the charges here. We're talking about how he died in jail because he was not sentenced to death. So this is somebody else, 34 years old. Okay, be careful. Didn't I just tell you I gave you an extensive warning. Do not drive through Fulton County and get tickets, driving fast because they consider misdemeanors. You're going to jail. You're going to jail to get a bail. You don't want to go in there. Okay. So the statement released Saturday is basically saying that 34 was un years old, was unresponsive in the medical unit cell on Thursday evening. It is said medical personnel tried to resuscitate him allegedly. He was taken to Grady Medical Hospital where doctors pronounced him dead in, at 5.30 a.m. At least he made it to the hospital because the other prisoners have not made it there. Okay. Now, court record shows he had been in jail on Rice Street with no bond, waiting for trial for three years and 10 months. He's been there for three years and 10 months in the county waiting for trial. That means he wasn't found guilty yet, babes. Just because you're locked up and you can't bail yourself out doesn't mean that you're guilty. Just to give y'all a heads up. Three years. Bell refused order and indictments shows that he was facing long list of accusations. We're not going to talk about that because at this point he wasn't convicted and he wasn't sentenced to death. So I don't care about none of this. Now. This goes down to say one of the most public cases involving um, Lawson Thompson, this was the other person. He died on September. We talked about this, 2022. Sorry. 2022 after a severe bed bug infest infestation. Remember we talk, told you all the bugs was coming out the man? Y'all thought I was lying because y'all didn't watch the video because every week I'm coming with these topics and i'm giving you updates this is what's going on in our community this is what's going on internationally this is what's going on with our crazy celebrities i'm keeping y'all up to date this is trifling guys please stay out of fulton county i just wanted to give y'all another heads up oh uh, on april uh 2023 fulton county um commissioners approved more than five million dollars in funding of improvement they shouldn't have did that where was the money at 
They need to shut it down and get a new facility. That place is, um, what do they say? Condemned. It's condemned. Okay, $2.1 million for uh, devices to track detainees' heart rates and blood pressure. $485,000 for sanitizer and decontamination medical um, and psychiatric observation unit. $630,000 for 4D image of male content to detect narcotics and other contraband in the middle. That don't got shit to do with that. Y'all should have did that with another budget. $1.1 million for 91 addition, 91 addition, 91 additional cameras for $1.1 million surveillance. What the hell did that have to do with the dirtiness of the president? The president, I mean, oh my God, I'm so done. I'm sorry, I'm just sleep. I passed out when I was just talking to y'all, but I was just talking. Okay, let me just start again. What does that got to do? 91 more cameras. What does that have to do with the cleanliness of the jail? They use $1.1 million of that money for that. Then they use $1 million for additional emergency management support with Emergency Management Service Inc. for a contract just to get the people to the hospital proper, possibly. They also invested another $869,000 in the feasibility study towards a new Fulton County Jail. That was their... Um, business plan. They spent $869,000 on it and it ain't working. They I'm shut, the, shut it down. I'm moving forward. Y'all know y'all need to petition. Y'all need to petition Fulton County jail. This is fucking enough. This is, this is enough. Now I ain't even plan on going to no white man's jail, but I ain't sure enough accepting this shit. Now anybody can end up in there. Y'all y'all better say something. If y'all been in Atlanta, Shit is dangerous. All right. Now let's get to it. Oh, my God. Now, I was going to get into this. I don't know. I'm ladies always in the damn news. Now, let's talk about a little bit of uh, update and um, <clears throat> local news at the same time. Now, we, we, used, we hit Atlanta a lot, okay? I was hitting Atlanta like, bam, bam, all this stuff was happening in Atlanta. I kind of fell back because we got other stuff, to, you know, other fish to fry. But we need to go back to Fulton County. I already told y'all about Fulton County. That's why I couldn't even believe that Young Thug and them, YSL, no, Young Thug, yeah, YSL and them was in Fulton County Jail. I thought the jail got shut down. After the guy had the maggots coming out of him. Do y'all remember? I shared that story where that young man or, or whatever man that was incarcerated, he was found unalive in his cell with maggots coming out of him, all types of stuff. And I do believe it was Fulton County, but we just going to follow through right now. Okay. Sheriff M.A. found dead. Sheriff M.A. found dead in Fulton jail with no obvious sign of injury. Mm. Now, either we got a sudden death or we got a problem. Okay, either it's another sudden death or we got a problem. As the Fulton County Jail and its leaders face uh, criticism after alarming death of an inmate in 2022, that's the same one I was just telling you about. Officials said another inmate was found dead inside the cell Monday evening. The last time I heard they were supposed to be transferring these people out of Fulton County Jail. That's what I thought they had said they was going to do. Obviously, that was a no to the no-no. Okay, this is ridiculous so another one was found unalive in the jail on monday evening the facility located on right street is at the center of the civil rights investigation recently lost launched by the u.s justice department so here go another police sector from another state that's being uh um how we say investigated by the department of justice doj okay and just like in memphis we just saw about memphis Okay. Between 2019 and October 2022, more than 20 Portland inmates died. Okay, guys? And I, I'm sharing this with y'all because y'all don't want to get pulled over in Fulton County. Because here, they try to put you on papers. They're going to try to get you in there. Even if you got your, your, your license is suspended, they will process you and get you in there. You're going to spend a night or two. 
You just got to be careful, okay, out here because you don't want to end up in a place here. Judge try to put you on papers. That's why this is a warning, too, and an update. At the same time, so between 2009, 2009 and October 2022, more than 64 inmates died, the highest total for any jail in Georgia during the time, according to Atlanta Journal. Constitution investigation. Monte, who has been in the facility uh, since October 2022, so it's about to be a year, was found unresponsive shortly before midnight Monday with no obvious sign of injury. According to the spokesman, a lot of, uh, Natalie Almond's jail and a medical professional attempt to revive the 40-year-old, but officially said that officials said that he was unresponsive. Um Stinson has been arrested by the Atlanta P Public School Police Department on charges of second degree burglary. So I want to gotta say what he was in there for. He died. He wasn't supposed to die. He didn't get the death penalty. You see what they do? Try to just assassinate the man character. Okay. So it says um stay Stan Stanson is the latest. Uh, the latest, the second inmate at the facility, according by uh, controlled by the facility sheriff office, to be found unalive in the cell in the past month. On July the 11th, who is that? This is Noni Koso Ko was delivered discovered unresponsive at the Atlanta City Detention Center with no obvious signs of injuries. Authorities previously say. Amon said Wednesday that the sheriff's office is still waiting on an autopsy report from that 19-year-old woman. I'm done. Okay, we got a 40-year-old and a 19-year-old. Is Grace, is, am, I, am I tripping? Is something not right? Is something not right? Okay, the 19-year-old woman was found down in the cell in Atlanta Detention Center. And that, even, that was not the one I was talking about. That was not the one I was talking about. I was talking about the man with the maggots. And now we have another, a woman. Atlanta Mayor Office Speaks Michael Smith released a statement soon after. Um, it's Kosokol, Kosokol. That's the last name, okay? Death, stating that um, Andre Dixon had converted a meeting with leadership, have convened, I do apologize, I'll get myself together, I need to get my damn glasses on, that's the problem, shit looking blurry, I can convene a meeting with the leadership to gather facts in the case, Dickens also reached out to the uh, county leadership and the sheriff's office to express concerns, more, that we need more than that, the DOG, the FBI, and need to be on this case, and guess what? The jail post has been shut down. That's all I wanted to tell y'all. They still got these inmates in Fulton County Jail and they still dying. They still dying. So don't come into Atlanta, get into Fulton County, get pulled over by the police. You may end up in the jail. I'm just saying not because, you know, I'm hyperinflating it. Literally, if you get pulled over by the police for the wrong right thing, you will go in at least and be processed to have to be bailed out. This is the MO of Georgia. I have noticed that. You know, I'm from Jersey, so I'm I'm used to seeing dirty Jersey, how dirty they go. But here, they make sure everybody, you don't got to be a criminal. A criminal is anybody that they deem made a mistake. And that's even driving. You will go to jail. So don't be careful in Fulton County, okay? You don't want to be inside of their jail. Let's move forward, okay? I, I just got to highlight that. Now, let's move on into our next topic. I'm going to make sure by the time we get to 30 minutes, we're going to take a break because I'm y'all going to hear a word from my sponsors because I, sometimes I'll be going in and I'll be forgetting. The main reason I go live is just to show y'all my commercial. Yep. Go ahead and judge me. I like what I do, though. I appreciate talking, you know, enlightening the people. All right, I'm back. I had to get, I gotta get rejuvenated, guys. I'm about two hours in. Who I'm surprised I'm not. Oh, I was about to say, I'm surprised I'm not sweating. My ass be sweating, y'all. She, I ain't do as bad today. Okay, sometimes I don't know. I just don't feel nervous. I think it just be them jitters. 
but it's okay, y'all. Y'all getting used to me. I'm getting used to y'all. Now, we're just going to give y'all a few, a little bit of local news, just a few updates. You know, we haven't talked about Fulton County in a while, and then we're going to finish off with our last topic, which is um, war, okay? War, okay? We're going to get into some updates and then get into maps just a little bit. We just got like a few to show. Don't forget about the maps, okay? Some, some weirdos out there just doing some crazy stuff. Now, um, the first person I'm going to put on is family to release a, a private autopsy for Fulton County e inmate who died after being in custody. This was two weeks ago. Yes, see, I stopped talking about Fulton County. That's the same place where Trump is being indicted. That's the same place where YSL is being indicted on that RICO charge. And that's the same place we continue to talk about how bad it is, how, how like, hold on. Let me see how, let me make, hold on one second, how bad it is when it comes to the um, inmate treatment and inmates actually dying, literally dying back to back, back to back, and they will not shut this damn jail down. And I done told y'all, if you come to Georgia in Fulton County, y'all move for me to freak is better than not getting no driving charges because that could lead you to jail. You'll be in this jail stuck waiting to get a court date. Okay. Let's put this up here. And you ain't going to be see a judge still acting like it's COVID up here. Talking about we backed up. You can't see a judge. Uh-huh. Let's go. We believe that this occurring in 7 South, he had just reported about a month prior that he was attacked in 7 North. Now, the difference between this North and South, it was significant enough to him that when he was attacked in four south when they tried to take him to four north he yelled that he didn't want to be on the same floor so even though four north is on a different side of the floor to him he thought in order to be safe i don't want to be on the same floor that i was on during the january incident so now we have in a situation where a month before his death he's on the seventh floor he reports an attack blood is all over his face they see that he's been beaten and he's on that same floor on the day that he's killed in a cell. So um, it is clear to us. Now, the, where, where I indicated that there could be more culpability on the part of the sheriff's office is in the uh, wording of Samuel's written complaint of the federal complaint. He says that uh, inmates were watching some of these uh, incidents. They were encouraging it. All right. Let me let that play through. Now, I'm going to say this. We can't watch this whole 18-minute video. This is an 18-minute broadcast about what's going on out there. And what I will say is that I believe that Georgia is not equipped for its gangs that's coming here. We're going to talk about it. I grew up where the gang, gang, gangs came from. And these jails need to be set up a certain way so this won't happen. We're going to talk about it. Beyond what he said, we don't have additional information about that. But we do know that... Uh, the actions that were taken to protect him were clearly not sufficient, that someone that is reporting that they have received threats from gangs of violence, he's seen shanks, he's been beaten multiple times, that further action should have been taken. Um, the county is responsible for the death uh, of Samuel Lawrence. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office failed in its obligation to protect him and we're going to stop right there. So this basically um, is two weeks ago where another gentleman has passed away. The family of a 35-year-old Samuel Lawrence who died in Fulton County Sheriff Office custody will be releasing a private autopsy result. So what this says to me is that not only is the harsh conditions in the particular Fulton County jail is an issue, because we talked about the bed bugs, the man being eaten alive, the people dying inside of the infirmary with the nurses and doctors, but this specifically is another issue. They don't know how to organize or categorize their inmates. Georgia in the South, I'm going to say, and just, not just Georgia, they have not dealt with so many gangs, okay? When it comes to dealing with particular gangs, you have to have gang units. So if you don't have gang units, then you're going to have something like this. Same thing they do in Jersey. If you are blood, they put all the bloods on one unit and they put all the crips on one unit. They know that that will be a state liability for someone knowingly 
in your records to be part of one other gang and have them in general population and or the opposite population. So this is a direct reflection of Fulton County to being overwhelmed um, with gang and drug activity in itself, not knowing how to take on the tasks of it, not, not going to other states that has a significant amount of gang activity and people who locked up. That's the last thing I'm going to say. In Georgia, it is a triad state. It really gets on my nerves, even in healthcare. I say, listen, things that are uniform in other states that you have found that work, you can you literally use that evidence base Okay, and implement it here and see if it works in your particular system instead of you just trying stuff and doing things the way you want to or the good old boy way. This is why you have many individuals that's dying in Fulton County. So I wanted to highlight that this is another issue. It's not only just the harsh conditions in there with the bed bugs, with the da -da -da. we do, and then and this was highlighted by this particular incident could have been also a reflection of when the inmates was complaining about their family being extorted. Like literally have to call their family to put money on other inmates' books or they was going to be dead beat up. So, guys, please, I'm not taking up for criminals, okay? But what I am taking up for is a just system. At the end of the day, some people who locked up don't all deserve to be in a jail if no one was physically harmed. If you had a ticket, if you ran a red light, you should not be in a jail. No one was harmed. If someone was physically harmed, then I think measures for you to be in jail. That's what the Constitution is based on to me. A crime is based on when someone is physically hurt or some damage has been done, but not damage to a paper law. OK, so if it's an ordinance and things like running a red light or, you know, failure to yield, give a ticket. But should they be belong in jail? No. Um, speeding to the point where you, it is like <clears throat> out of control and, you know, it's, it's danger to people. I think those people should be locked up, you know, you know, teach them a little lesson, but all of this rest of this stuff is really too much. Okay. So now let's get into it. Another Fulton County jail, um, jail update. And this was, um, actually October 23rd, Fulton County jail transfers hundreds of inmates to other facility. OK, this is something that I have been calling for for the last couple of months. I told you they got to get these people out of here. I don't care. I don't care. They are human beings. They be your cousin. You coming by past here to visit Georgia. Your ass got a little drunk, came from a little party event down in Atlanta and end up in their jail. You don't want that to happen with no bail. OK, so let's start this. Let's listen to this article. The Fulton County Jail has received much or uh, has gotten much less crowded in the last couple of months as the U.S. Department of Justice has had a presence there since the start of October. Now, we love the lives. Doug Richards tonight has more on what has now happened. The Rice Street lockup has seen its population drop sharply, mostly because the county has been successful in moving hundreds of its inmates to other facilities. They moving them because the feds on their butt, okay? The beds on the floor oh of the Fulton God. County Jail are nicknamed boats. They're temporary beds, and during COVID, there were more than 500 inmates sleeping on them. But as of Sunday night, Fulton Jail officials say 51 inmates were sleeping on boats, with the number dropping rapidly. They had, uh, you know why they dropped it rapidly? Because they was probably finding them, and they, they listen, they came down like a bat. It's probably getting fined every day that one inmate was on them bunkers because they get paid per in inmate. And as per their contract, some of these jails, they have to have minimum living conditions, cells available enough for who they house. So if you don't fall under those contract, private jail contracts correctly, this is probably why they went to move them out so fastly. Because I've been talking about this for the last six, seven months. Outsourcing allows us to get people off the floor out of floor devices off and, and really treat people in a humane fashion. Thank you. Sheriff Patrick Labatt says the Rice Street jail population has dropped sharply in recent months. Nearly 400 Fulton inmates are now at the Atlanta City Detention Center, but hundreds more are in facilities ranging from Cobb to Oconee counties. That's pushed the population at Rice Street down to about 2077 as of Sunday night, nearly a thousand fewer inmates than at the troubled jail's population peak. Yet it's still dangerously overcrowded. It was built to hold 1,125 inmates. Its current headcount is still almost double that. Labat says prosecutors and judges need to help reduce the overall number of people jailed. Mm. We'll figure out how ultimately 
we can Thank take you. individuals that have been incarcerated for more than a year and see what that looks like and working with the judges to see how do we get people into a more safe environment. Labatt says the ultimate answer to overcrowding here is a new jail cost of a couple billion dollars. Oh, he says God. that even with the inmate population dropping here, this facility is beyond repair. No, thank you. It's beyond, it's beyond repair. I'm glad he said that. And he said their solution is to build a better, bigger jail, another jail. Instead of coming up with solutions to stop the prosecutions of people who don't need to be in jail, do um, bail review, have a bail review committee, have a, a case review committee, um, wrongful arrest committee. OK, that's the, some of the things that lower the actual um, incarceration rate in Jersey and in the North. I'm just going to be honest because some people were incarcerated wrongly and charged really harshly. So they had bail review. They had sentencing review committees that people were able to fight and get their case reseen and being released. So these are the things that need to happen in Georgia. But, you know, only people like me that came from the North will, will, will bring up solutions like this. So hopefully, you know, people who have the power could so we're going to just move forward i wanted to give you a flashback on that and now we have another flashback update and the saga continues when we talk about miss fanny willis okay so we got another update and I'm going to give you my perspective. We did talk about the disqualification hearing and the outcome and why I think certain things happen, the way that uh, the, act, the lawyer actually represented the case. I don't believe it was strong enough, but she did show the character of Fannie Willis and the underlying things that I have been talking about for months that goes on in um, Fulton County. It's pretty crooked. So we have an update about Fulton County and also about the judge. So judge allows Trump and co-defendant to appeal order, letting Fannie Willis continue on the 2020 election case. So to me, this is saying to me that this particular judge did not want to be responsible for um, making the decision to pull her off the case. One, because what we talked about, I believe that they had some type of connection. She, she either he worked under her or with her at some apparent point in their career, and also the the foundations of the case. So you know, by opening this up, allowing um, the co defendants, other co defendants in this case, and there's a whole lot of them to come up with something to follow through with this discontinuation of Fannie Willis. So let's see where that leads us. Cause you see the, the judge is trying to play both sides to me. He left the door open because as I said, he did not want to be responsible, but he does know that there is some type of corruption, something that was not right that Fannie did. Now, Fannie Willis really reveals her greatest crime. Now, Missy has finally made a statement. And this is this is this is what really makes me feel some type of way because you could have just took a whole glass of just shut up. You you got you know away with it right now. And but you want to you want to put fire onto the flame and show more of your arrogance to me. This is what she shows me. So um, Fannie Willis gives um, her comment on Saturday to Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis made her first public comment um, since the judge ruling that she could remain on Donald Trump uh, case. But we already know it was either her or her boyfriend. OK, and this is her response. I don't feel my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I have done. I guess my greatest crime is that I have a relationship with the man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing in any way. You know, I pause because that man was married. Okay. You don't feel embarrassed about that. And he still is married. How about that? And I know that I have not done anything that's illegal. Now, it's not illegal for, say, that you go to jail, but in Georgia, they like to charge, charge people with statues instead of real actual crime, victimless crime. And under that, you did a crime, okay? You didn't follow the guidelines of your job, and that is, one, to disclose any personal relationship with anybody, 
not 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 only just employees but contractors as well and then the the money that you was receiving i mean well the gifts and the trinkets okay in relations to that if it wasn't a problem why didn't you disclose it why didn't he disclose it to his wife or to the wife lawyer in the divorce proceedings so obviously something was not done right and and allegedly they allegedly because the judge was like don't go there it's illegal to cheat on your wife adultery is illegal in america okay so, and I know that I have not done anything that's illegal. Willis spoke on CNN, okay? After the East Egg Hunt in College Park, Georgia, said in response later on Saturday, Trump leads defense counsel for the case. Steve Shadow posted X formal Twitter on, on, on X, which is Twitter, in response to the district attorney comment. Apparently, Judge Scott McFay warning to Willis in his disqualification order about talking about the case in public forum is simply being ignored. Does that surprise anyone? No, because when she went into that church and talked about it, they, they said it in the case. These are things that prosecutors are not supposed to do. They're not supposed to talk about, you know, proceedings, um, especially in the middle of a high state case like this, um, calling people criminals. Um, you have a 90% arrest. I mean, you know, um, winning record and these people are racist just add a few to the flame making the proceedings already start in a public platform and that's something that she was not supposed to do so we'll see if anybody actually appeals this decision made by the judge because as i told you i believe that the judge just wanted to get out of the hot seat the judge didn't want to have nothing to do with that he was like man i'm gonna play both sides I know this woman, she taught me some things. I have to work with her in this building. And that was another thing. These proceedings took place in the building that she works in. That she, she's literally the district attorney there. They didn't even try to pull it outside of Fulton County to make it at least seem unbiased. And this is what goes on out here. Nobody even said that, even thought about that. Why would it be taking place? She literally ran down from her office in the middle of proceedings while watching it. And that was known by what she said. That's how she got there on time, even though she was not supposed to actually testify. That's what they were in the middle of saying, trying to get her not like, no, she don't need to da da da. And here she comes lollygagging in the court because she was watching it. The whole thing was crooked. The whole thing was ridiculous. So now we have um, one more update about Miss Fanny, because as we talked about, there are things going on in the Fulton County Court um, jail and the courts that needs to be handled, that needs to be put out there on Front Street. They talked about the arrest record. They talked about clearing the books in Fulton County. We know how dangerous Fulton County Jail is, how many inmates have died last year, over 23. We showed you numerous reports. And now we have Fulton County DA Fanny Willis sued over incarcerated people waiting in jail without indictment. Now, I would assume this would happen. You know why? Because she did a live, well, she did an interview, very articulate, you know, pay attention to the numbers. This is what I did. This is what I do. You know, she laid it out there and I had to give her respect, but she gave a little bit too much information. There was still a good number of inmates that has been sitting in Fulton County over two years, three years that she allegedly states the reason why they're sitting in limbo without even having um, been indicted because they were not mentally stable. So that leaves them in limbo. And in all regards, it seemed like they were indefinitely locked up until they can be proven to be um, able to stand trial, which that is unconstitutional. So I don't know if some of these cases has to do with that, but there was a good number of cases that she even mentioned that people were sitting in Fulton County. So what ended up happening is that you'll get arrested and you're waiting to see a judge. The judge is already backed up. So you didn't really, really get formally, formally indicted on the charges. You literally just did for arrest. This is all suspected because when you're arrested without being actually seeing a judge and getting the charges put on you and getting a court date, you're literally still being presented with these charges by police. You see what I'm saying? So that gray area, that's why it's a short time from when they lock you up to when they have to put you in front of the judge. Because other than that, they're literally just holding you based on speculations.
OK, it's supposed to be proceedings that are supposed to move forward. And that's what's not happening in Fulton County in some cases. So let's listen to this. The Atlanta nonprofit Bar um, Barrel Business Foundation is suing Fulton County D.A. Fannie Willis for allegedly failing to inform the judge when some uh, someone is held in jail on felony charges without being indicted for longer than 45 days. Felony charges. Now, like I said, she said these felony charges include people who are mentally unstable. But let's keep let's listen to what they're saying. So the Atlanta nonprofit Barrier Business Foundation is suing um, Fulton County DA Fannie for allegedly filing uh, felon to inform judges when someone is held in jail on felony charges without being indicted for longer than 45 days. A report last year by the Maris, American Civil Liberties Unit found at one point more than a third of people in Fulton County Jail fit that description, a third, okay? Julian Clark is an attorney with the ACLU, which along with the ACLU of Georgia is representing the nonprofit in lawsuit. He spoke with GB, I mean, GPB, Peter. Okay, so this is a short transcript. Let me see, can I play some of this for you? Instead of me reading through the transcript, I think they have it. This is All Things Considered on GPB. I'm Peter Biello. The Atlanta nonprofit Bard Business Foundation helps formerly incarcerated people and is now suing Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis for allegedly failing to inform a judge when someone is held in jail on felony charges without being indicted for longer than 45 days. Mm. A report last year by the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, found at one point more than a third of people at Fulton County Jail fit that description. Julian Clark is an attorney with the ACLU, which, along with the ACLU of Georgia, is helping the nonprofit in its lawsuit. Welcome to All Things Considered. Thank you, Peter. So your study found uh, last year that hundreds of people are waiting in jail without an indictment. Mm -hmm. When you asked Fulton County why these people were waiting so long, what did they say? So um, we specifically sent in a records request um, that asked for information about it, but we never asked directly any officials in the county why why people are being held. What did they say in response to that information request? So we specifically requested whether they were complying with um, a court rule, which is subject of the lawsuit. Um, and they responded that they have no information that is relevant to our request, which suggests to us that they are not in compliance with that rule. Mm. Otherwise they would have had something to show you. Exactly. Okay. So why is it important for a judge to know when an individual is kept in jail for that amount of time without an indictment? The reason why it's essential to know is that uh, Fulton County Jail now and for a long time has been experiencing overcrowding. There's terrible conditions in the jail. People have died. Dozens of people have died over the last couple of years. Yep. And right now, given those conditions, uh, if there's anyone that's in the jail that hasn't been convicted or the judge has an opportunity to expedite their case processing. It's essential that the judge be aware of that. Is this unique to Fulton County or is this going on elsewhere in Georgia? So our investigation was primarily focused on uh, Fulton County, but our understanding is that this is likely something that's happening all over the state. It's well known that throughout the state, there's a shortage of uh, public defenders and there aren't enough judges to uh, quickly handle all the cases that are presented to them. So even if the judges in Fulton County were informed, what could they what could the system possibly do after that point given the state's limited resources? The chief judge as the the head court administrator has the authority to bring in other judges, whether mm -hmm. retired or judges who are in other jurisdictions to help expedite the, the court's docket. So and let's pause right there real quick, because Nathan Wade was an acting judge. They both were acting judges at one point. And Nathan Wade, they asked him about his judging duties, and he's like a PRN judge. So what I hear here is that this is a foundation for the new prosecution review board prosecutor let's say prosecutor review board that has been established and signed into bill by government kent just the other day has something to be looking into and that is her not doing her job and that's not only about the funding that's one thing they're gonna look at how she's spending now they're gonna talk about her communication how she's moving prisoners through jail they're gonna go in on this lady she has opened a can of worms um and all i can say is hey if you want trump they want you now 
let's continue into Georgia just to highlight because I didn't forget about Fulton County just because we haven't been talking about Miss Fannie Mae and all her shenanigans. We're going to talk about what's that's happening in that jail. And I want you to remember now this young lady, I don't remember talking about her, but Fulton County jail is still a serial killer. Okay. While we got Fannie Mae going there with going after the alleged future president or candidate or whatever when she got all this stuff going on in her jail she should be ashamed let's listen east 28 deaths at fulton county this is noni she was only 19 years old when she passed and it stated that she died from a toxic mixture of medicines used to treat schizophrenia and bipolar disorder she was in jail for trespassing at a high school that she once attended this is monte and he was 40 years old when at least so this particular story about this young lady, did you hear the charges? And this is what upset me about Fulton County and a lot of these counties out here in Georgia. It's literally a good old boy system. She trespassed. She was in jail for over three days. They gave her a deadly mixture of whatever, antipsychotic medications, and she passed away. This was a little girl. I hear this all the time, and it's not just in Fulton County. I hear this about Jersey jails as well, where literally inmates stay high, like high, okay, off of these antipsychotic medications that doctors and nurses in there are giving them, and they are um, contortionating their bodies. They're doped up on lives and TikTok showing yeah, showing us what's going on in the jail. jail. Drugs is being sneaked in there on top of that. But specifically, for encounter, we got to keep our eye on what's going on there and don't be distracted because there are inmates dying. That little girl was trespassing. And that's what I was saying. You could drive wrong. I keep saying it. You could drive wrong, end up in Fulton County Jail. You could get locked up for disorderly conduct, end up in, in Fulton County Jail and, and not see a judge and be held at in restraints and crazy stuff. Today, I was watching the YSL trial, listening to the alleged leader, one of the leaders, and they were just trying to depict how the Fulton County Jail is terrible. And it was funny, I was while we when I was showing you a video a couple of months ago, I was like, is that a shower? And I kept saying to myself, is that a shower? Is because that can't be a shower because that's the general area. The gentleman today in the YSL trial, a basically um the way he explained the shower area was in the general rec room. It was two showers for upstairs and downstairs, and it was in the general rec room with the uh, with the shower curtain that covered it. And to be backed up. Okay, that's disgusting. Okay, listen, we're going to get into Fulton County and the dangers of being locked up out here in Georgia. Please, guys, this is not a joke. That's why I watched this by yourself, trial. Not only is just like, oh, it's not about rap, it's literally about them using this Rico charge. This Rico charge, before we get into our next traumatizing story, because this is a little traumatizing, guys. Demons are out there. Um, before we get into that, but um, ah, just just cross just totally just jumped out of my mind when I said demons was out there. Looking at this young lady, looking at this young lady face that's coming up next. But anyway, we're gonna get into Fulton County a little bit more. Some of the horrific things that has been going on there, going deep into details, and probably give you an update on what's going on with our famous Fannie Mae as well as other young black elite government officials gone rogue. It's been so many, so many, and it's ridiculous, and it's a little bit embarrassing, okay, because a couple of years ago, just before the COVID, I don't know what went on. That's when you know it's in times. That's what they said. When they put a bunch of black people in, 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 in y'all don't like, don't like this shit, but I'm going to keep it real. That's what they said. When you, you put a bunch of black people on the top, that means the system about to collapse and we're going to be the fall persons. I know y'all ain't like that shit, but I promise you. I said, damn, that's a lot of black women they hiring to go be a judge, be this, be that. Now, I love it. We do what we do. But you need to go in there with a good moral compass, okay? And know that if you're compromised the way that the owners are compromised, the others, 
you're going to be the one that's exposed, okay? Just know that. So we're going to do a special on these government officials like um, Tiffany Henyer, the other judge that update that killed her boyfriend that's on bail that went out partying it's so much i mean just ridiculous okay so this one is going to be a little serious story guys before we get into teachers gone rogue okay i want you to be careful because as i mentioned when, we, when i'm when i'm hinting to that people are demonically possessed yeah right hey she's talking about demonic possession it's not a joke. People are not able to hold their self. They're not able to hold their feelings anymore. It's like whatever I feel I want to do. In these next two stories, you're going to see this. This man ordered this young woman that he, they met on a date. Okay. Now, it is a Caucasian man and a black woman. I'm not even going to talk from a color perspective. I can but what I am going to talk about from a demented perspective because of what he did. And he's not the only one. And it's, it's across color lines right now. Hold on. I think my mouth is a little dry. I need my lip off. I'm paying a lot of me. Anyway, it's across color lines. And I really want my audience to be prepared for what we need to be prepared for. And that's literally good versus evil. You need to pick your side. You need to pick your side. You're going to love what you're going to hate, but you're going to be judged. Now, the real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, Realist investing can seem intimidating, but today I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.